Hey, last time we talked about the phase diagram for water. We have a different substance and initially this might look just like the phase diagram for water, but this is CO2, carbon dioxide, something that we normally think of as a gas. Let's talk about why we normally think of carbon dioxide as a gas. You know, we talked about our normal everyday existence is at one atmosphere and probably our normal temperature, uh, it ranges, but our normal temperature is around 20 degrees Celsius. So let's say it's right there. That means that under normal conditions, carbon dioxide is a, is a gas. And it might, uh, you know, make sense to us. CO2 is a, a nonpolar molecule. It only has London dispersion forces. So it's really hard to change it into any other phase. But you can, and you can do that at relatively uh, low temperatures. So you've heard of dry ice before, and you probably know that in uh, like the theater industry, other industries, CO2 is used uh, to create smoke because you can pretty easily take some dry ice that's at a really low temperature and heat it up at one atmosphere and it will turn directly into the gas phase. You don't even see any um, liquid at, at pressures of one atmosphere. By the way, let's talk about that phase change. When we go from the solid to the gas phase directly, it's not something we get to see every day, but we call that sublimation. So that's what we just mapped out going at one atmosphere from low temperatures to high temperatures, sublimation occurs. By the way, if you went the opposite way and you decrease the temperature and turned it directly into solid, that's a, another form of condensation called deposition. So you might think that, you know, you can see dry ice, you can see, um, or you, you can have CO2 in the gas phase, but there's no such thing as, as liquid CO2. Well, that turns out to not be true. It just exists under extraordinarily high um, pressures. And so if I moved up to, and this the scale on this is not very good, but if I moved up to say this point on the graph right here, and I've got um, dry ice at a really high pressure, it's possible to do what? What did we do just now? We melted dry ice and turned it into liquid CO2 at a really high pressure. And likewise, we could continue along that path and we could get the boiling point. CO2, just like water, has you know typical triple point where all three phases exist in um, in equilibrium with one another. And there's also a critical point at which point you have something called a supercritical fluid. Uh, we didn't mention that in the last video, but it's a fancy way of saying, look, above the critical temperature, which is 31 degrees Celsius, it doesn't matter how much pressure you put on that CO2, it's not going to turn into a liquid. You're above the critical uh, temperature or above the critical point. The only other thing I want to discuss about this diagram is a difference in slope in what we call the solid liquid equilibrium line. And the line that I'm uh, specifically talking about right now is right here. Okay. And it's very, very slight, but I want you to notice that it's different than what we saw with water. With water, when we drew the phase diagram, sorry for my sketch here, that line kind of leaned back to the left. And so what we saw in water is that if you increased the pressure and you moved the particles closer together, they actually became a liquid, right? Um, that doesn't happen with CO2 or for that matter with most substances. You know, I can barely see it here, but let's say, let's say I've got CO2 in the liquid phase and I increase the pressure on that CO2. Eventually, 
it would turn into a solid. That, that typically makes sense for most substances. You get the particles closer together, that's more in line with what we think of as solids. It also means that if you had a, a dry ice cube um, and you placed it into some liquid CO2, it would act totally different than we would expect because we're used to water and uh, water ice. And when you put ice, an ice cube into liquid water, it floats on the top because it's more dense. But in most substances, the density of the solid is higher than the density of the liquid. Again, high pressure means high density. Particles are closer together. And lower pressure means lower density. Particles are further apart. So that's a difference between CO2 and water. Okay, we'll talk more next time.